Bible. Smack. Okay, so I'm just going to put a short reaction to a uh, Vody Bacham video. Uh, this is done under the channel of uh, Reformed Wiki. And basically, um, Vody doesn't want himself to be called a liberal when he does liberal things. And that's because he was doing it according to his masters, the Calvinists, when they do liberal things. And they are, simply put, an extension of the Catholic Church. Um, how much so? A lot more than they used to be. I'll put it to you that way. Uh, in days gone by, they used to identify the Catholic Church as the Greater War of Babylon. Uh, pretty well uniformly, and uh, essentially that has gone by the wayside, and they are spelling out salvation uh, with a lot more synchronicity, putting justification and sanctification together. When you see the uh, federal vision movement and how the reformers really didn't take these guys to task, you know, they they, you know, hail the idol of John Piper. They're still pretty uh, friendly with, um, oh, I forgot his name now. <laughs> but um, who was it with the Federal Vision Movement? I think I started it. I, I got it on the tip of my head, but I don't really think of him enough anymore. <laughs> so anyhow, um, basically... Uh, yeah, so the, this Federal Vision Movement and stuff, uh, a couple people marked it, but didn't really go anywhere, and they still, in many reform circles, revere them. Doug Wilson, there we go. Alright, so basically, Vody is kind of preaching the company line. The first thing he wants to talk about is, like, how, you know, there was no official word, and people have different views in the end times. And therefore, you know, you have to be very Catholic about it. Because instead of trying to read it and understand what the scripture says, no, scholars say different things. And that's kind of the deal, right? Scholars disagree on whether the gospel's true, and they put on names of preacher and bishop, okay? Is that how you measure your theology upon what scholars say? It does if you're presenting liberalism. <laughs> All right, That's what they're doing. Only the greatest thing about it is that with this reform theology movement, they try to get the best or worst of both worlds. They claim that they're superior with their scholarship and superior with their orthodoxy. And when the two get contradicted, they don't want to. They want you to say anything, okay? Well, just don't do this stuff, you know. And he who cast the first stone, right? They've been casting a lot of stones. So sorry, but you got to you got to man up, okay? And you know, bring it. All right? I know he's supposed to be like a BJJ master. <laughs> bring it. I mean, if he wanted to come down to my house physically. We could do that too, okay? But honestly, all right, I know we're holy men, we don't do that. <laughs> but honestly, you know, if he wants to debate me, let's go debate, all right? He ain't going to want to debate me. He's wanting to shut me up. And so, a bunch of lackeys, you know, come on up here, lackeys. You are lackeys. Defend your mighty idol, okay? Dispensationalism is popular because people think it's true. People think it's true because they read the text and they think, okay, that makes sense. So, you know, then he starts talking about like how um, the first thing to go, you know, he said like, oh, we've got somebody who left dispensational theology. Why? Because there's not a Catholic church to back them up? All right. Is that the truth? <laughs> But yeah, so I guess this guy Sam Storms, he left dispensationalism. So the first thing to go was the rapture, okay? Now the word for rapture is harpazo, okay? Now let's let's look at Revelation chapter 12 real quick. Yeah. 
and talks about the woman. And it says in Revelation 12, 5, And she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. When he was caught up, what is the word in the Greek? Harpazo. The same one. Talk about the rapture, you know, in Thessalonians 4, 16. Yeah, it's the same caught up. I wonder about this. Let me see if that's in there. I'm just looking right now. I could be wrong. Let's see here. Okay, so it's not that it's not used that way. But uh, basically, there's something that's kind of interesting here. Um, in Revelation four, after this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened to heaven, and the first voice which I heard was as it were a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the Spirit, and beheld a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And it's going to talk a little bit more. I'll talk about the 24 elders and how they've already got these crowns. Okay, and we're supposed to receive crowns upon a judgment. But essentially, they're like, oh, the rapture. The rapture doesn't mean you get caught up. Because all millennialism kind of says, okay, now we're done. All right. We don't actually get caught up. But Jesus was caught up. He ascended into heaven. All right. So that's where that goes. Well, uh, let's see here. Should I talk about that anymore? I'll, I'm going to leave some uh, articles for you to read uh, later on. And I'll, I'll put that link to the video. All right. And then he's crying about like how dispensationalists are very strict. And you can't join a dispensationalist college or a dispensationalist church unless you're a dispensationalist. That's not always true. I don't have a problem if it's true. You know, and because, let me tell you something, okay? Vody's part, part of the biggest sectarian movement right now. All right, everything's about Calvinism. You have to agree with Calvinism or else. All right, and they've thrown lots of people out for not adhering to their form of Calvinism. And they will, like, rip and tear at anybody who doesn't adhere to their principles. So, really, come on now, okay? Um, you know, if, you know, it takes two to tango, all right? If, if you're going to sit there and be as dogmatic as possible and vicious and mean-spirited and tear people down, then don't go crying when somebody else is dogmatic, too, okay? Um, but, you know, Calvin was a Roman Catholic, and there's a lot of Roman Catholicism inherently built in, because when they even, when they stop agreeing with Calvin, they go further Catholic to Augustine. Okay, so this is a common problem, all right? They, they run to these Catholic mentality things. Um, and so, yeah, Calvinism is much more militant. Uh, they'll talk about Revelation 20, and they'll say, well, it's symbolic. Well, I don't have a problem with symbolism. But the problem is that symbolism does not mean to erase, okay? If something is symbolic, it might have some literal value elsewise. You know, even Philo, who was an admitted Platonist, okay, even he believed that there were six days of creation, right? Now, when I look at Revelation, yeah, I see there are things that are symbolic, but there are things that, you know, have to be literal as well as symbolic. Okay, there are symbolic things taught about the flood, but we still know that there was a flood. And, you know, some may say, well, there's only, you know, one mention of this thousand-year reign of Christ. So, you know, does it doesn't really matter. Well, there's only one mention of the, um, what was it, the uh, Tower of Babel. Okay, there's only one incident mentioned. Uh, when he talks about the Sabbath, okay, if you're a young earther, and I think he's supposed to be a young earther. So, if you're a young earther, there's two mentions of the Ten Commandments, and the, the Sabbath talking about the six days of creation is only in Exodus, and it's not in Deuteronomy. 
Okay, so, you know, what do you do with that? Well, basically, you know, Jesus said that every jot and tittle will be fulfilled. Okay? Every piece of a letter will be fulfilled, not just big clump passages. All right? The, um, the whole thing is rife with what we call Platonic philosophy. Let me um, read a couple articles here that I got off of Wikipedia. Now, um, this one, I believe, is the uh, amillennialism. And uh, it's reading off of Wikipedia. It says, with the influence of Neoplatonism and dualism, Clement of Alexandria and Origen denied premillennialism, okay, which was held by many of the early church fathers, and including Irenaeus, who was the student of the student of John who wrote Revelation. Okay. Likewise, Dionysus of Alexandria argued that Revelation was not written by John and could not be interpreted literally. He was on late. Amillennialism gained ground after Christianity became a legal religion. It was systematized by St. Augustine, you see, Augustine, Calvin, it's part of their thing, okay? Wax on, wax off, any literal meaning, right? Amillennialism gained ground after Christianity became a legal religion. It is systematized by St. Augustine in the 4th century. Now, some can argue that it's both pre, or it's both amill and post-mill, together there, okay? But anyway, it says Augustine was originally a pre but he retracted that view, claiming that the doctrine was carnal, okay? Why do you call it carnal? Because it was physical, because Augustine is pushing Gnosticism, okay? So, these ideas are Gnostics. The Gnostics are also the equivalent of New Agers, okay? So, this doctrine is liberal, and yes, Vody's pumping liberal doctrine, let me give you a little bit more proof of that. In, um, oh, let's see here. Verse 5 and 6. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. In the all mill scheme of things, the first resurrection must not be a physical one. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death have no power, but they shall be priests of God and shall reign with him a thousand years. Okay, so this is talking about resurrection. If we make resurrection a symbolic word, then you have to question whether Jesus really physically raised from the dead, which is part of the Gnostic heresy. Okay. It's all liberal, baby. It's, it's just a big mess. Okay. Finally, when we look at Revelation, there's a lot of spiritual realities that are real. Okay. He asked about, you know, when Satan was bound and there's a key and a chain. Is that literal? Yes. Why? Because the spiritual realm, if you're in that realm and outside of our physical realm, that spiritual realm is physical, and you can't get around it once you start studying these different examples, like Jacob's Ladder. He built a mound there because he saw Jacob's Ladder there, but it was in his dream. It was spiritual, but it was a physical reality once he got to the, once he got to the spiritual dimension, it was in a physical reality. Okay, when they talk about... Um, the angels, okay? The angels cannot reproduce, right? Well, is it because they are just because there are spiritual beings here? Maybe I, I might not go there. But what you have is you have, like, when there's a crystal sea, is there no sea? If it's all immaterial floaty place, okay, what's to make one thing, the floaty sea, different from the floaty temple? Where are we going here? You're going into Fantasy Island, all right? You're going into mythology. And I've seen guys explain it like that. They say, oh, the imagination and the imaginary images and everything. No, okay? We're not going there. We're not going into this mysticism, which you're trying to create, okay? Um, when we look at Revelation, what does it say? Blessed is he that readeth and that hear the words of the prophecy and keep those things which are written. 
therein, for the time is at hand. Okay, so you are blessed if you read this. You're not cursed. And why is it that all mills don't really do a lot of preaching on Revelation? Because they look stupid when they do. All right, well, I'll go ahead and uh, let y'all have a good time. So we'll see you later on Bob's Mac.